Part of my seminary formation was done on Long Island, New York. And we had one day off per week there when we were allowed to leave campus. So one day I drove to Staten Island because I had heard of a memorial there dedicated to a deceased veteran that I wanted, wanted to learn about and maybe inspire me somewhat. This man served in the United States Navy. He was killed in action in Vietnam while serving there with, the, with a Marine infantry unit. I found the memorial at the western terminus of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in the, what's called the Fort Wadsworth Gateway National Park. And there, the memorial, it looks kind of like this here. There's, there's a stone plinth. And atop the stone plinth, there's a beautiful bronze statue, maybe a little larger than this, of course. And the statue shows a, uh, a Marine laying on his back, clearly um, been injured in battle and kneeling next to him, holding a book over, over him was another man praying over the man who was laying on the ground. And so let me share with you now the words inscribed on the plaque on, the, on, the, on that statue, on the, on the memorial. It says this, quote, in memory of Lieutenant Vincent R. Capodano, Chaplain Corps, United States Marine Corps Naval Reserve, who gallantly gave his life in the cause of freedom, although his only weapon was faith. Lieutenant Capodano, a Catholic chaplain was born on Staten Island on February 13th, 1929, who was posthumously presented this nation's highest award for heroism, the Congressional Medal of Honor, for his actions on a battlefield in the Republic of Vietnam, where on September 4th, 1967, he was mortally wounded, and, and dying comrades of the 3rd Battalion, 5th Regiment, 1st United States Marine Division. Father Capodano died in the manner which he had lived, unselfishly serving God, his country, and his fellow man. And then at the, at the bottom of the plaque, it says this, erected by Madonna Council number 5915, Knights of Columbus, through the contributions of the people of Staten Island, New York, and dedicated July 3rd, 1976, on the eve of the bicentennial celebration of the founding of the nation, which he so honorably served, unquote. It was a very, was a very moving, um, it's a very moving monument. If you ever get a chance to see it, I really encourage you to do so. And today, a number of monuments, other monuments to Father Capodano exist. There's from New York to California. There's a monument to him in Japan. And yes, there's even a monument to him in Vietnam. Father Capodano received numerous honors in addition to his military decorations. The United States Navy even named a frigate after him, which was blessed by Pope John Paul II. His greatest honor, of course, is that given by the church he loved and served. And his canonization cause has been opened. So one day we may see him or know him as Saint Capodano, Saint Vincent Capodano. Such is but one story for today, Memorial Day, a sacred day that has countless other stories. Whereas Veterans Day is the day we honor all military personnel, the focus of Memorial Day is much, much narrower. Today is the day we remember and pray for all those who've gone before us in the line of duty who died while in military service. The grave of each and every veteran is full of stories. If you look around here in the cemetery, we have a lot of veterans here, and some of them passed away in the line of duty. They all have stories too, you know. Each and every grave of a veteran has a story. Vietnam alone, represents 58,000 American graves full of stories that we're never going to know. 
but they're there. Yes, Memorial Day is a secular holiday. It doesn't appear on the church's liturgical calendar. But if it was a, if it was a religious holiday, I think Father Capodanno could very well easily be its patron saint because he sacrificed his love for, for his men. That's how he saw them in the, the Marine Corps. He loved them, and by sacrificing his life under enemy fire, he demonstrated the epitome of what Jesus Christ taught all of us when he said, greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. To one extent or another, that could also be said for anyone who died in line of duty. They laid, they laid down their lives in service to their country, bravely facing the dangers of war, knowing the risks involved. Their sacrifice goes beyond mere civil service. It's really an act of extraordinary love in which they willingly gave up their lives to protect their fellow soldiers, their friends, and the values they hold dear. Certainly, men go to war and risk their lives for their country, yes. But in the end, I believe they're far more willing to give up their lives, not for some political entity, not for a country, not for a flag, but for the brother next to them. Their selflessness and unwavering devotion exemplify the death of love and commitment of which Jesus spoke. In their sacrifice, they've left an indelible mark on the world, reminding us all of the profound significance of love, courage, and the willingness to give everything for others. All the veterans who've died in the line of duty gave everything they had. Why? Not just out of love for country, that's what we hear, but love for us, that's what we need to hear. Although you may or may not be much of a flag waver, or you may or may not agree with the politics behind a particular war. I know Vietnam was very controversial, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you thought, thought about it, because I think we can all admire all of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for us, even though they could not have known any of us by name. Which one of them who died in Vietnam knew any of us by name? Probably, probably very few. And also most of them, all of the veterans here in our cemetery, are not famous. There are no statues built to honor them. And yet, we remember them today as well. And we looked at Father Capodano as a sort of representative for all that is good and true and just. With the passing of years, most of our veterans, their names are forgotten. They're written on the tombstones, yes, but is anyone praying for them? So that's why we're here today. We're, pray, we're here to pray for our veterans who passed away, especially those who are nameless and have no one to pray for them. But nevertheless, I can think of no greater act of Christian love than their sacrifice for us. And so we come today to pray for them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.